We have a very complicated tale of infighting and intrigue, and let me tell you, it makes Game of Thrones look like child's play. Things get wild here. But let me go ahead and begin now, then we can get into the actual game itself, but I want you to understand what the characters were all about before we actually get into the meat of the game where I'll play my chosen prince. Emperor Wu of Jin, or Sima Yan, was the grandson of Sima Yi, who would become the first emperor of the Jin dynasty after taking power from Cao Huan, a grandson of Cao Cao. In the year 280, Sun Hao, the grandson of Sun Quan, would surrender to the Jin, officially ending the Three Kingdoms era, and things were calm for a time. While Sima Yan was considered to be a kind and decent ruler, who also had a pension for the ladies, he made two major mistakes. One was to give power to various members of his clan to keep power within the family and to potentially stabilize the realm, because he did have barbarian tribes who were invading and causing issues. Each prince, which he had about 27 of his relatives made princes, and he would give them their own land, but each one was meant to have around an army of 5,000 if they had a lot of land, a large holding. But if they had a smaller holding, they were meant to have less men. But as you might imagine, many of these princes were concerned with consolidating and growing their own power. Mistake number two was making his eldest son the heir. Sima Zhong was a mentally impaired fellow who was married to Jia Nanfeng, when he was 12 years old and she was 14. She would or she would have her servants write responses to the emperor, alleviating his fears about his choice. When his first wife died, he would later marry Yong Ji, a daughter of his advisor Yong Jun. And that Yong Jun would later be made the regent for Sima Zhong. When Emperor Wu died in 290, Sima Zhong became Emperor Wei of Jin, but of course due to his incapability, he was only a pawn in the coming conflict. Now you know why various princes had power and there would later be so much infighting. Yong Ji, the widow of the emperor and the new emperor's stepmother, initially had the most power and would empower her father's position, Yong Jun, as a regent of the new emperor. Jia Nanfeng would write to Sima Liang and Sima Wei to come to the capital of Luoyang to help. Sima Wei came with an army and Jia Nanfeng accused Yong Jun of treason which did turn out to be true because he did change the former emperor's will to increase his own power. Writing for the mentally impaired emperor, Jianon Feng wrote an edict denouncing Yang Jun and ordering Sima Wei to attack his troops. The widow of the emperor, Yang Ji, also wrote edicts too, demanding help. But she was accused of treason and starved to death while under house arrest. Thousands of the Yang family were killed too. In killing the entire family or clan or followers of a certain person was a very common outcome. A very bloody one too, but you'll be hearing that a lot as we go through our tale here, a very bloody tale. Sima Liang would then take control for a time, but was also accused of treason by the Empress, and he was killed by Sima Wei. She then spread word that Sima Wei forged the edict and he was deserted by his followers, so he too was executed. Jia Nanfang held the power for some years after this, but she had another obstacle to overcome. Sima Yu, her stepson. He was a product of the Emperor Wei and his concubine, Xie Zhu. Jia Nanfeng invited him to a feast and when he was drunk, had him write out a plan to kill the Emperor and become the Emperor himself. When this was revealed to the Emperor by Jia Nanfeng, he refused to kill his own son and instead revoked his status. While that was going on, you had Sima Lun, who worked with the Jia Nanfeng and had actually been waiting for a chance to get rid of her. He convinced her to kill Sima Yu before he could expose her plot and so she did. Sima Lun then accused her of treason and forced her to commit suicide. Her family and followers were killed. He placed Emperor Wei under house arrest and declared himself emperor around 301. Sima Jiang, Sima Ying, and Sima Yang joined forces against Sima Yun. They defeated his armies and forced him to commit suicide, killing his supporters and his family as I mentioned before. Sima Jiang restored the emperor to power, but that was only a ruse, as he truly held all of the power, and he gave high positions of power to Sima Yang and Ying in order to placate them. Sima Yang wasn't happy about that and made up a story, a story that Sima Ai was plotting against Sima Jiang, hoping that the infighting would weaken the emperor. Sima Ai escaped and in a battle would kill Sima Jiang. When Sima Yang came to the capital, he found that Sima Ai was in control. Sima Yang waited for a time and would eventually ally with Sima Ying to get rid of Sima Ai. Sima Ai was eventually captured and killed by Sima Yang. 
Now we're finally reaching the conclusion of this conflict. Sima Yue served Sima Ying and would turn over Sima Ai to be executed. Later, Sima Ying, Yong, and Yue all shared power and wealth in the capital. But Sima Yue was jealous of the wealth of Sima Ying and convinced the emperor that he was planning a coup. Together, Yue and Hui allied against Ying but were defeated and Hui was taken prisoner. Sima Ying took Hui to Luoyang, which was under the control of Sima Yong. Sima Yue gathered his forces and attacked, defeating Sima Yong in battle. Sima Ying and Sima Yong would be killed in the following year in various circumstances. And Emperor Wei would die in 307. While Sima Yue was last prince standing, the emperor still had another blood relative, Sima Qi, the youngest son of Emperor Wu, and that was the child of one of his concubines. Sima Qi would become Emperor Huai of Jin, and Sima Yue won his short-lived position. I'm not going to go into too much detail because we're only talking about the War of the Eight Princes, but to let you know, there was so much infighting going on here, and you had mercenaries hired all over to supplement forces, that barbarians would eventually depose the Jin Dynasty, and the Jin Dynasty would fall. It was quite short-lived, and it's really a time period that was plagued by just an awful civil war. It's very funny because maybe if the Wei had more time to have power, things would have been different and it would have been a much longer lasting peace, but that did not happen. Anyway, let's finally get into it. I hope that really did help out for all of you. Now, to let you know, those were bullet points. There's always a lot more detail on how people died and what they did, but I wanted to let you know the overall gist and how every character was pretty much involved. So here we go.